page, two to page, three and verse 41. Two to 41, victory you, Jesus. <laughs>
was saved, uh, that oh, the right. cell was coming to turn their heat back on and so forth. They're staying in a hotel. So they were well. Uh, Al McDermott's son, Denny, lives in Superior, and uh, his place was saved. They, they're back home. Oh, right. uh, so all of our people in Superior uh, are safe, and their places are safe, and the same way with, with Louisville. The Sanders, Casey and, and Megan Sanders live in, in Louisville. They live near a Vista Hospital in a, in a town hall. And uh, yes, a sister, Carla, who comes to church quite frequently with them, lives in downtown Louisville. And, and so what their place was the, uh, the Navarra, so Sam and Lisa's place. Ms. Lisa was talking about how the smoke in their house from, from all of this, but, but, but it, it's safe and so forth. So as of the moment, all is well. And God Amen. has answered prayer. It protected our families from the destruction of fire. To God be the glory. Amen. And bring things He, He hath done. Brother Cullen, you come lead us in prayer. Uh, just in light of everything that's happened in our community, I wanted to do something special this morning, and I, uh, I just like to kind of go around the room and just whoever wants to, and we won't take long, and I'll, I'll close this out. I just like whoever wants to uh, to, to say a prayer, and uh, uh, obviously for Brother David, and then just our our community in general. I just like to go around the room. I guess uh, just to get the ball rolling, I'll, I'll start off, and then I'll I'll, I'll end it and. And if you know if we have if we have people and, or if we don't you know I'll adjust either way. But you know if the Lord lays on your heart to pray this morning, I, I I'd love for you to, to to join me this morning. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we we're burdened for our community. We're burdened for 
Brother David, we, we thank you so much that uh, it sounds like he's doing well, and we continue to pray that you'd heal him following this heart attack, and uh, we pray that you'd comfort him and Miss Janice. And Father, I, I'm a burden for our community. I, yes. I've been so, through so much, and I can't even imagine, uh, the first of all, the, the loss of, of life, and we, we do pray that, Father, we... We, we pray that those who are uh, who are physically hurt and harmed, we, we pray for their healing, and we pray for comfort for those who have lost loved ones. We uh, we pray for the for so many who have lost their homes. We we pray for their provision. We pray most of all that the light of Christ will shine during this time. Amen. And Father. Uh, Again, we, we thank you so much for the love and care that has been shown throughout our community. And Father, we again, we, we pray that, uh, that, that Jesus Christ will be seen through this. We thank you so much for this snow. Amen. And I can't imagine Amen. not having this snow when we needed it this day. And we, um, we, we pray that, that you'd be with our emergency personnel, continue to give them the wisdom that they need to... to to uh, wrap up this fire and to uh, to get everybody back on their feet, and uh, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you so much for um, sparing my daughter's home, mm -hmm. and uh, I just ask that you would be with Sushi and Vithal Patel as their house did burn to the ground, mm -hmm. and, and just to be with so many others. And Lord, just help us to know what yes. to do for those who have lost their homes. Um, just have our our ears and our hearts open to what you would have us to do to help them in any way that we can. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Dear Lord, please uh, grant your wisdom in this time of need uh, for those that have lost um, everything they probably own. Um, possibly they don't have a place to stay, or maybe they do, or maybe it's temporary. Um, it goes beyond the, the imaginable Lord. You would never think in such a nice, you know, a beautiful area, as, you know, in this area here, that it could be so quickly consumed by fire as it was. Mm -hmm. You just pray for those, Lord, that are in need, Lord, that you would bring to our attention mm -hmm. quickly and under, with understanding, with patience, with love, mm -hmm. that we may yet, might be able to help them, Lord, in the best way that we can, Lord. You've given us the means, Lord. You've given mm -hmm. us the safety to help others yeah. and to reach out and show your love, Lord. We just pray, Lord, for those that are affected by this and um, pray for those that are affected by the smoke, you know, as Lisa mm -hmm. and, and her home is, that you would uh, make amends quickly for these uh, mm -hmm. things, Lord. And, and also for health, Lord, and safety of all the EMTs, the firefighters, mm -hmm. the Amen. EMTs that are involved, Lord, in this uh, operation, that you would be with each and every one of them, Lord, <coughs> and that you would show yourself strong in the midst of this crisis. Mm -hmm. I just ask always for this to be according to your will in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, and Lord, we're so thankful that we are gathered here in your name right now. Mm. We're thankful that you put us all together in a place that we can do things for other people. We can help with food, help with prayers, help mm. with uh, literally everything, dear Lord. Mm. We're just thankful that you chose where we are today, mm. dear Lord. Not because we think we decided. That you chose for us to be together today and pray for those that uh, the majority have nothing, Lord. They have nothing to their names. And we ask you to just be with each and every one of the families uh, that have been affected. We're so thankful that, that you put your fence around the people that we know <coughs> personally. There Amen. Just continue to help us to always be a light to everybody that we minister to, dear Lord. Yes. There are people that know us that we don't know, and help us to continue to 
put God's light in front of everybody we come in contact with because um, we know that your light is far hotter and far more beautiful than the fire, dear Lord. And we need to shine for thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we, we thank you that we're able to gather here together to fellowship, to pray with one another, and to lift up our, our requests to you. And Father, we, we pray now for this service. We pray that you'd speak to our hearts as we, we hear from your servant, we hear from your word. We pray that you bless. We, we thank you for our dear missionaries who are here with us today. We pray that you bless them. And we, we thank you for their ministry. We pray that you would give them safe travels and as well as everybody. And we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Chuck. It's such a delight this morning. We, we love our missionary families <coughs> that are scattered. <coughs> they're scattered around the world and Gillette family has been part of our church family for many years I can't even remember now when that all transpired but it's been a, a, a good while it's so good to have uh, brother Gillette brother Daniel Gillette and his wife Laura and their lovely lovely family with us this morning and I want him to come and share a little bit about their work in India brother Daniel we love you and your family. God bless you. It's so good to have you with us. I appreciate your love and warmth. It's a very friendly church, and it's great to be here again. I think it's been 20 years, Pastor. Uh, uh, I think it may the be time goes so quickly anymore. Yeah, I came up here yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think it, you're right. Yeah, I was. I was just thinking, as you know, reflecting on the fires that have just been here, how there's really a parallel to to missions. You know, uh, physically, people's houses were destroyed, and by God's grace, no one in this church was destroyed. Yes, I it's do. very similar. I believe most of you here have been saved from the fires of hell, as I have. Yeah. We've been saved, we've been born again. But we have neighbors, we have friends, we have people all around the world whose lives have not been spared from the fires. That's what missions is all about. It's serious business. And your church, this church has had a role in saving souls all around the world through the missions program. I want to report, I just got news a few days ago that a family of five was baptized. They came to faith, they were Hindus, they came to faith in Jesus Christ, and they were baptized on December 24th, New Year's Eve, in a, in a uh, state called Odisha in India, and you had a part in that. Five souls snatched from the fire of Amen. Okay. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Praise the Lord. He is working. They had a Christmas Day program, and they were expecting 120 people, and 30 of those probably unbelievers contacts. So God is working, and uh, it reminded me of the, of the good news of great joy on, mm -hmm. on Christmas, which yes. we just celebrated. You didn't take down your decorations, so I have permission to use a Christmas <laughs> You didn't take down your decorations, and I didn't forget my Christmas first. So it's actually Luke chapter 2, verse 10, when the angel yes. gives the news to the shepherds, what does he say? He says, I bring you good news of great joy. I evangelize you joy. That I bring you good news is actually the word in Greek to evangelize. You are gilijomo. You are gilijomai. So I bring you good news of great joy. I bring you the gospel which shall be for all people, all the people. So the people here in Erie, the people in Louisville, <coughs> Louisville, the people in uh, all the surrounding neighborhoods, and the people in India, the people in Pakistan. And through your church, you have had a part in bringing good news of great joy, which started at Christmas, the incarnation of Jesus, yeah. continued in his, his death and his resurrection, and now, as his gospel spreads throughout the whole earth, he's gathering a people from every tribe, kindred, tongue, and nation. We're involved with three of those groups. You're going to see in the video, which we're going to show now briefly. The Pente group in uh, South Asia, the, the Kamar, and the Bunja. Pray for these groups that many, many more will come to faith in Jesus Christ, just like that family of five came to faith. So we thank you for your support over 20 years, your prayers, your gifts, 
they make a huge difference. They allow us to be a ministry, and we're grateful. So we're going to have a video now that sort of describes our ministry. We've shifted gears a few years ago. Uh, we're still 100% missionaries, but now we travel a lot. It's, and we're actually based here in the United States. So we did not travel from India to come to be, be with you here today. We just came from Virginia, actually. And uh, we got caught in the storm on December 31st. And we were praying as I was driving. It was so slippery. And we saw a lot of cars in the ditch. And I was saying, God, rescue us. And he did. He brought us through. Like Amen. We did end up in the ditch. And so uh, let's have the video okay. As we reflect on our 18 years at India, our hearts now have the same prayer for India that they did when we first settled there in 2000. I remember arriving in the city of Varanasi in 1991 and just amazed at the worship of the people and how they would go and dip themselves in the water and give all kinds of sacrifices, fasting and praying, but praying to what they, the gods they didn't know personally. And so my prayer is for India still, sing unto the Lord a new song, sing unto the Lord all the earth. And I want that the Lord would reach out and touch the hearts of the people, that their hearts would be drawn to him, that the nations would come to know the Lord. After learning Hindi and moving to central India, Pastor Sapson and Pastor Rajesh joined our ministry team in 2003. We helped Pastor Rajesh start Rifle Baptist Church in the capital city, and God has really used him through his tracks, magazines, and recently during the COVID crisis, he was able to have a daily broadcast through Facebook, and God has really used that in outreach there in the capital city. He is actually now independent of us. They have enough giving from the church, but we still need to pray for this ministry. Pastor Sudhir was an answer to prayer for war laborers. He was training to be a priest in a Hindu seminary when he saw a film about Jesus. Later, when he was in jail, an evangelist visited him and he came to faith. Immediately, he wanted to be a Christian pastor. His uncle used to be involved in Hindu black magic and cursing to bring injury on others. But now God is using his nephew, Pastor Sudhir, to bring the blessing of the Almighty God through Jesus Christ on people living in darkness. Through your gifts, we sent Pastor Sudhir to get a Christian seminary education. And now he's leading our village outreach ministry in central India. He's the leader for six other nationals we fund. He's also translating the Bible into Krupto, Every Friday, Pastor Sudhir gathers the men who are involved in rural evangelism and outreach, and they study and pray together. He is leading them through the 10 courses of the, of the Bible Training Center for Pastors, BTCP, and uh, they go out then through the week and reach out to the villages. Pray for the churches. There are four rural churches and one church in Galiban. Uh, there are churches in Chindola, Koshin, Kamharipara, Hatva. The Krupto people number about 40,000. Uh, Dan, you remember the time you first went out there and you told us that they had greeted you with their long bows and arrows. And the kids and I believed that, I and mean, it was kind of scary at the time, but they actually just wanted to show them off. Sometimes they have issues with health problems, and some of the death rate, the infant mortality rate actually is a little bit high with the group, but there are still quite a few in the tribe, and they love their language. They often do not speak any other language, so the need for the translation was great. And the literacy rate, however, is only about 20%. Since we left India in 2018, two institutions have closed down. We had Life English Center for 11 years, but it was unable to continue after we left. But while it was there, God used it to help us reach Indians, Afghans, and Iranians. Several lives were impacted and some came to faith. Similarly, Sapson Rout, who started Grace English Medium School, he had to close that. Pray for him as he still wants to reach out to the Gunjia and the Kamar. He's started his own business. Uh, he's raising fish and he wants to be a self-supporting missionary. So pray for Samson. Though some things have closed down, new ministry has also opened up. Our burden for India continues through funding nationals through pioneer work. 
Most recently in March 2021, there was a great answer to prayer with Mark Sutchin and his wife Jyoti joining us for outreach to the Bunjia tribe. Pray for the Bunjia, there are zero Christians among this tribe, it's a very pioneer situation. Hello and praise the Lord everyone. My name is Sachin and I along with my family, we are working among Bunjia tribe. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. <coughs> For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. In 2018, we sensed the Lord moving us into a new phase of ministry. Our base is now in the United States with a lot of travel overseas to South Asia and India. We will travel also daily through Skype and uh, meetings on the internet, even though we're on this side of the ocean. Laura's role will be as a literacy consultant, and my role is as a Bible translation consultant with Bibles International. Bibles International is in the business of partnering with nationals and church associations to do the task of Bible translation. That partnership means Believers who speak Pente are the translators, but BI provides the consultants who bring Greek, Hebrew, linguistics, and knowledge of the translation process to the table. BI helps them with the equipment to do the job effectively. It means a collaboration to provide the most accurate, reliable, and readable Bible that will sound natural to them. Daniel has been made the primary consultant for the Pente Project based in another nation of South Asia. Training of the translators took place in Dubai in May 2019 and quick progress is being made. One of the restricted access nations is home to Bibles International's newest translation project, the Pente People. Pente is actually a pseudonym for a vibrant people group and language found in a very restrictive part of the world. This people group, comprised of millions of people, is in need of a Bible in their heart language, a translation that allows them to comprehend the message God has given them. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. How do the pastors encourage the faith of their people if the people do not have a copy of the Scriptures in their mother tongue? That's where their faith is going to be strengthened. With the Pente people, uh, it's very interesting that language will reach over 90 million people worldwide. I was very privileged to get to meet uh, some of the Pente believers uh, a couple years ago when I went to visit. They have a heart for the Lord, they have a heart for evangelism, uh, reaching the lost. Uh, this is a Christian community in the middle of a Muslim community. There are varying uh, levels of persecution against believers in this country. First place I met was just down the street from a church that had been suicide bombed a couple of years ago. This people group, comprised of millions of people, is in need of a Bible in their heart language, a translation that allows them to comprehend the message God has given them. The pastors that are evangelizing, they, they get that. They see the need when they switch from the national language to uh, teaching and preaching in Pente. Uh, then they see a greater response from people, especially in the rural communities. The Apostle John's vision in Revelation of people from every tribe, language, tongue, and nation is one that inspires us to be faithful and to keep on working until the end. That's our vision for the Bunjia, the Crypto, and the Pente. We thank God for those of you who are partners. You're currently not a partner. Would you consider joining us in extending his kingdom by supporting nationals and providing God's word in languages that have no scriptures? Laura, I'd like to fill my prayer with Daniel. In behalf of the Bible Baptist Church of Erie, I want to present you a check for you and your family in the amount of $1,500. Amen. You know. you and your service and work. And again, we, we treasure you, we value you, and you're very much in our hearts and love. Thank you.
I want your children to stand. This is their lovely family. They've grown up in my eye before me, but uh, I appreciate them so much. God bless you. Give another hand. We, this is a great, great church. It's a giving church. I did not promote, I just mentioned a week before Christmas, let's take an other's offer. We're going to give to others. My goal was $4,000. I didn't mention that till last Sunday. We, took, we went to the bank and got $2,000 in $100 bills. And at our food bank, before Christmas, we handed $100 bills to people that were coming through the food bank. Just anonymously. <laughs> we want to do something for others. And we've, we've done that. But our other's offering was $5,940. Wow. Wow. Amen. We won't take $4,000. We were just hoping. We had the largest offering we've ever had last Sunday. God has so abundantly blessed us. 2021 was one of the greatest years this church has ever had. We baptized more people. We were able to reach out and do more things. We helped more missionaries. We've just, it's just been unbelievable. And our total offerings for 2021 was $343,900. And eighty dollars. That's unbelievable. Amen. If you know our history, we've lived from hand to mouth for many years. But we said we're going to we're going to do for others. Others is what we. The old song said, "Others, Lord, yes, others." Let this my motto be: that I might live for others, that I might live for Thee. And we're so grateful that we've been able to help and do. And it's so good to have the Gillettes here on the first Sunday. 2022 as we kick off this glorious victorious year for the Lord Jesus Christ brother Terry let's sing a verse of Jesus is coming again and Miss Rhea then is going to play for us page 125 page 125 we're going to sing the first verse of Jesus is coming again 125 125 
Thank you, thank you so much. Take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, that little book, the little John. <laughs> Last year, as we began 2021, I did a series on doctrine titled, Why We Believe What We Believe. Preached about why we believe, what the Bible is, the Word of God, the infallible, inerrant Word of God. We preached about <coughs> Jesus, about the Trinity. We preached about uh, the church. We preached about heaven. We preached about hell. We preached all the majors, beliefs, through the Scripture of 2021. And then back in the fall, I began a series from this book of 1 John titled, Genuine Confident Christianity. And I'm preaching through the book of 1 John, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. But I'm jumping ahead this morning. The last message I preached was in chapter 2, but I'm jumping ahead to chapter 5 this morning. As we talk about our theme for 2022, I believe we need a theme. We, we, we need something to, to guide us. I hope you picked up one of these to put on your refrigerator, put on your desk. Again, our amazing victory in 2022. And our theme verse for this coming year is going to be 1 John 5, 4. And this is the victory. I don't know about you, but I like victory. Amen. I, I don't like defeat, although defeats are sometimes a part of life. But God has made us more than conquerors through Christ. And John said, this is the victory. This is the victory that overcometh the world. And what is that victory that overcometh the world? Even our faith. Let's stand. We're going to read responsibly the first six verses of 1 John chapter 5. I'll begin in verse 1. And we'll read down through verse 6. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begetteth love, lo loveth him also that is begotten of him. I you know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness, because the Spirit is the truth. Father, we're thankful again for this time together in your name. We're grateful that we are victors in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in a time that many have been defeated with a loss in their life, May they know that your promise is that I will never, never, never leave you nor forsake you. That we can always cling to the cross. That Jesus is always there for us. His promise is as fresh as this day is today. Bless your word and your people. In Christ I pray, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you see that, please. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the television series called Survivors. I don't watch it. <laughs> it's deceit and lies and so forth like that. But people voluntarily just, you know, want to go to an island and the last person that lies their way out gets a billion dollars, you know. <laughs> They're the survivors. What does it mean to be a survivor? In our world, we have all kinds of survivors. We have cancer survivors. We have abuse survivors. We have tornado survivors. 
We have earthquake survivors. We ourselves are flood survivors. Amen. And so the list goes on and on. It's great to be a survivor, but I want to tell you, I want to be more than a survivor. I want to be an overcomer. I want to be a victor, not a victim. And God has promised us victory in Jesus. We sang that song, the very beginning song this morning. I love that song. As we were singing it, I remember the first time I ever heard that song, I was in a Filipino church in Angeles City, the Philippines, stationed in the Air Force. And I remember that. I never heard, heard that song before. I was raised in the Methodist church where they sang those high hymns. They didn't sing those gospel hymns. And, and I'll never forget hearing that and looking down at that and seeing those Filipinos. And boy, they were singing to their victory in Jesus. And literally, that's become one of my favorite songs that I have said to my family, whenever you have my last service and plant me in the ground, that's the song I want to Victory in Jesus. Because that's what it will be. Now notice in John here, in our, our scripture text, in verse 4 and verse 5, for Whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Now that word overcome comes from the Greek word Nike. Now you're familiar with the swash. <laughs> Nike. Well, that word Nike that's translated here overcome means victory, victorious, conquer, or to conquer. It means to prevail. We are overcomers. We are Nike. Before Nike ever came into existence, we're Nike. <laughs> Amen. We are overcomers. Too many people have settled just to be survivors when we're called to be thrivers. God wants us to thrive in His grace and in His love. Rather than being overwhelmed as we often are, and I understand that, I get it, I'm there myself occasions. Rather than being overwhelmed, we should be overcomers. And that's what John is telling. Remember, the book of 1 John is written to Christians. It's about confident, genuine Christianity. What does a genuine Christian look like? And John is giving it to us throughout this book of 1 John. And among the other things, John's saying, listen, if you love God, you're going to love one another. If you love God, you're going to keep His commandments. And, and so John is talking about genuine, confident Christianity. And God doesn't want us just to try harder because our victory is not in our effort. Our victory is in Jesus. Remember Amen. what? John the Revelator, the same John that wrote 1 John, the John the Revelator in the book of Revelations, chapter 12, and verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. John is saying, listen, we are overcomers through Christ. And as we think about our amazing victory that we are promised, that we can experience, that's not some dream, that's not some fantasy, but it is a reality for us as we contemplate, as we think, as we focus upon our amazing victory. I think there's three pertinent questions that we need to ask and address as we think about that amazing victory. And the first question is this. What must we overcome? What is it that we need to be overcomers of? And he tells us, and this is the victory that overcometh what? The world. The world. The cosmos. Back on November the 28th, I spoke about the world. And I want you to turn back to chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 for just a moment. 1 John chapter 2. 
And notice what John said in chapter 2, verse 15. John said in chapter 2, verse 15 of 1 John, Do not love the world. I'm reading from the New King James. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We talked about the cosmos. That's what the Greek word cosmos means. From that word we get cosmopolitan. We get the word cosmic or cosmetic. The word cosmos is a verb that means to order, to arrange, to put in proper condition. Now in the Bible, this word world, and he says in verse 15 of chapter 2, do not love the world. When we live in the world, what is it? We're not to love. Well, the word world is used three ways in the Bible. The first way the word world is used is, is the created world. This is my Father's world. God is the creator of this world. And so when we see our beautiful mountains, that's God's creation. We say, oh, isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that bless our heart? Amen. We live in a beautiful world and we are to enjoy this beautiful world. It's God's creation. He put us here to enjoy it. That's the first way the word world is used. Creation. The second way the world is used is people. God so loved the world. What is the world? The world is people. Brother Daniel showed about the people of India that they serve in. And, and the world is, is global. God loves this global world. He doesn't care what kind of language you speak. He doesn't care what color your skin is. He doesn't care what your diet is. He cares about your soul. And so the world is people. So this cosmos, love not the world. He's, the, the world is creation. The world is people. But thirdly, the word world speaks of this world system. This demonic system that is under the control of Satan. That's why the apostle said, this world is not my home. We're pilgrims and strangers passing through. That's why the analogy is used that, that again, we, we, we live in tents because we're strangers and wanderers and pilgrims. This world system is what he's saying we're not to love. If you go again to chapter 5 of 1 John, in chapter 5 of 1 John, and in verse 19, notice what he says about the world. We know that we are of God. 1 John 5, 19. We know, John saying to believers, we know that we are of God. We're God's children by faith in Jesus Christ. Washed in the blood of Christ. And then he said in verse 19, we know that we are of God and the whole world, the whole cosmos lies under the sway or the power, the control of the wicked one. You see, this world system, this world system is under the control of Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him. That's why we see the decadence that we see today. This world has gone further and further away from the moorings of our foundation. That's why there's, you can't have a Bible verse anywhere in public anymore. Why? Because Satan doesn't want the Word of God. So we're under, the, we're under this world's system. So he's saying to us, we're not to love this world, the world system. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. So here we see the world. Now, again, going back to chapter 2. He tells us in verse 15 what to do. Do not love the world. Now, in verse 16, he says... He says, for all that is in the world, this world system dominated by Satan, 
For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And so, John is telling us, the world will in filtrate us, it will infect us, it will infatuate us if we are not filled with the Holy Spirit and walking in the Spirit under the Spirit control and guided by the Word of God. This world will corrupt us. Amen. Worldliness, and that's a term sometimes, you know, oh, they're a worldly Christian. Well, we live in this world, and all of us are worldly in some ways. Some of us more than others. Worldliness is anything that keeps you from loving God as you ought to love Him and doing His will. If I love something more than I love God, if I love something that's going to keep me from doing the will of God, then that's worldliness. That world system has put us tentacles upon us and it's got us in his grasp and hold. Now again, God has put us here to enjoy this world. And there's nothing wrong with enjoying the pleasures of, of the world that we live in. As long as those pleasures don't control us, we control them. Amen. You see, that's the difference. Worldliness is when the world controls you. When you're walking in the Spirit, the Spirit controls you, not the world. And that's why we're commanded be filled with the Spirit. And when we're filled with the Spirit, then then again, the, the world doesn't, doesn't put its tentacles upon us. Yes, we're going to be tempted. We're going to be drawn here and there. John is simply telling us our world is our enemy. And, the, and that enemy affects us three ways in verse 16. He says, first of all, there's the lust of the flesh. In verse 16. What is the lust of the flesh? Well, the lust of the flesh refers to passion. Primarily, often this lust of the flesh is, is, is sexual in nature. But it can be anything that we, that, uh, that passion becomes so powerful that it absolutely controls. That's the lust of the flesh. He says, don't let the lust of the flesh, don't let the passions of the flesh have control over you. Don't love the world. Don't let the lust of the flesh be that which controls you and guides you and is your compass. Don't do that. When we become passionate about something in life, then again, we need to make sure that it lines up with the, God's purpose for our life. I've often said, and I'll say it again, it's a good time to say it, <laughs> when I lose my passion for the Lord Jesus for preaching and for this church that's when I'll hang it up Amen. but as long as the passion and fire burns in my soul I'm not going anywhere Amen. unless you fire me you can have that prerogative to do it anytime you want to do it but as long as the, it's, it's the flame burns in my heart the passion for Christ and the passion of people and the passion of ministry. That's the right kind of passion. And we need to be people of passion. But he says the lust of the flesh again feeds the flesh. And that, that, that again quenches the Holy Spirit. And then he talks about the lust of the eye. What is the lust of the eye? Well, that's about possessions. Oh, we see this, we see that. That's why again, you watch five minutes of TV and five minutes of commercials. Again, they, they want, you know, they're, they're appealing to the eye. The lust of the eye is very dangerous to your bank account. <laughs> Amen. Let me tell you something. <laughs> With Amazon and a credit card, brother, you can have it. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm as guilty as anyone. Oh, that sounds good. To get my Amazon app out, yeah. Okay. Be here tomorrow. <laughs> Love it. Because <laughs> I hate wearing a mask in stores. Yeah. Yeah. 
The lust of the flesh refers to passion. The lust of the eye refers to possessions. And the pride of life that he refers to in verse 16 of chapter 2 refers to position. I've got this position. I'm Mr. So-and-so. I love these preachers that like to be doctors that are not even good nurses, you know. <laughs> they hardly got out of high school, but they're a doctor. They, they, you know, you can get one for $250 from some place. And, I'm Dr. So-and-so! Now, I have great respect for men who have earned degrees. Amen. I have great respect. And I refer to them as doctor because they've worked. And I, I have great admiration and respect. But again, I look at these little pinhead preachers that don't know did the squat and they get a doctor in front of their name. And, and again, they don't know how to dress. <laughs> the tiger comes up to here. Coops like that. And they're doctors. You know what that is? That's the pride of life. Position. Listen, that's why we're brothers and sisters. Amen. And he says, the pride of life makes me, I've got this position. I'm, I'm the CEO of this company. I'm the, I'm the CFO of this company. I, I'm the director of this. I, I have this. I do this. This is my position. Now, I am thrilled when people have high positions. And I work for a company. <coughs> biotech company called Eppendorf Fire Prime, which was a, a, a company on the cutting edge of, 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 um, of the biotech of, of, of uh, what am I trying to say, of, of, of the gene, of, of, of the research of genes. And I worked in this company, there were all many, many doctors who were scientists now. And what I observed was this. Most of them didn't go around calling themselves doctors. They just wanted to do their job. They, they, wanted, to be able, they wanted to develop products that would help in, 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 in DNA research. And it was very enlightening to me that, that again, I was working around men. And, and you know, well, I'm Dr. So-and-so. No, this was, this was Peter Constantine. Peter Constantine was the president of that company. He was a German man from Germany, but he spoke, of course, English. And when our church was in transition, we'd sold our property in Boulder, and we were looking for property here, and we were in transition. And I was working for this company in quality control, and I went to Peter Constantine one day, and I said, Peter, not Dr. Constantine, Peter, Peter, would it be possible for our church to meet in the conference room of this building? He said, let me think about it. He came back to me about the next day. He said, yes, I'll talk to our directors and that'll be fine, except just take the cross off of the roof when you're done on Sundays. <laughs> in other words, he was facetiously saying, yes, you could do this. And he was being facetious. We met in that, that building, a, a, a biotech company on the cutting edge of DNA research. We met in that company for two years in their meeting room, and they didn't charge us one penny. Amen. Amen. One penny while we were in transition. And listen, you talk about miracles, how God works. No sooner... Have we completed this building and we moved into this building on the first Sunday of 2005? Go to work on the first Monday of the new year of 2025. Uh, 2005. I see all these big wigs walking around with their suits on. I said, something's up. <laughs> when you see the big wigs walking around with their suits on, something's up. We've got a company meeting today. Everybody must be in attendance. Everybody walks into the room where we've been having church, about the size of this right here. They announce, this company 
has been sold and it will be closing its doors in less than six months. <laughs> Everyone will be terminated. <coughs> and people said, well, what are you going to do, Jim? I said, I'm going to do what I've always done. I'm a pastor. This, this has been my playtime around here. <laughs> I've been coming here and playing every day. Easiest job I ever had in my life. I go, God, I've got to go back to work. I go back to be a pastor. <laughs> God had arranged us to be for two years in that building while we were in transition to we finish building this. The Sunday we moved into this, the next day they said, we're closing this building. And it was under new ownership. We would not have been able to be there any longer. You see, we, we must be careful about putting our position, oh, I'm, 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 I'm this and I'm that. The world system wants us to be under its domain. But God wants us to be under His domain. Amen. And the world system wants to overcome you and to keep you from knowing God's presence and experiencing God's power and pursuing God's purpose. We don't have to look for victory. Because we already have victory. Amen. And that victory is in Jesus. We sing about it this morning. The winner of this cosmic battle is within you. Because Jesus is the winner, you and I are winners. Amen. You see, Paul said, listen. God has already placed us in heavenly places. We're already seated today, right now, in heavenly places. Because we are more than victors. This is the victory. We don't have to fight the world to obtain victory. We just have to walk in victory that is already ours in Christ. Amen. Very quickly, and this is quick now. You're going to really have to put your ears on high listening because I'm going fast now. <laughs> we talked about, again, what, what is it that we need to overcome? Let's talk about how can we be overcomers. Go back to, to, to chapter 5. Go back to chapter 5, our, our verse scripture. How can we be overcomers? This is real, this is real simple. I like simple things. I like Amen. To, I like to put the cookies down on the cart, down on the where everybody get their hand in the jar. <laughs> Don't put them on the top of the cabinet where you've got to get a ladder. To get. <laughs> that's what we all want to do. We want to put it up there where it's unreachable. No, let's get it down here where we. This is real simple. How can we be overcomers? First of all, it requires birth. Birth. Look at verse four. For whatever is born of God. Or really, literally, whoever is born of God. I'm a victor if I'm born of God. What does that mean? It means you've been born again. That's the same conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus who came to him at night, this religious leader. What is it that I need to do? And Jesus said, Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What does it mean to be born? I'm old. I can't enter the second time my mother's womb. Jesus said, I'm not talking about a physical birth. You've already been born physically. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. You must be born again. You must have that transformation that takes place in your heart where, again, you realize you are a sinner, that Jesus is the Savior who came to give His life a ransom for mankind. He came not to... to, to to, uh, to be served, but to serve and give His life a ransom for many. The, the new birth is where our victory begins. I'm a child of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I've been adopted into His family. So have you. Our victory begins with our birth. Secondly, our victory begins with belief. That's the last part of verse 4. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. How am I a victor? I'm a victor by birth. I'm a victor by belief. Even our faith. 
That's why last year I did an extended series on why we believe what we believe. If you don't know what you believe, you're going to be like a leaf in the wind. But if you know what you believe, you can be anchored. And we're anchored in Christ. So, again, it begins with birth, belief, and thirdly, how can we overcomers? Look at verse 6. We're overcomers by the blood. Verse 6. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. It's through the blood of Christ that we're more than victors. Let me tell you, give you this little secret. Anytime you feel the world's temptation and you're about to step over that line that you know is wrong, you're about to step over that line you know this is not going to be good. This is not right. But again, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life is pulling us in that way. And we're about to step over that line. We know that if we do, it's not going to be pretty. How? How do we have victory? We have victory through the blood of Christ. If you plead the blood of Christ, Lord, I plead your blood. Satan will always leave you that very moment, that very second. That's why the blood of Christ is so powerful. And yet, the blood of Christ is something you hear very little of today. Very few songs are about the blood. Paul said, God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of Christ. The cross is that which His blood was shed. And so how do we become overcomers? By birth, by belief, and by the blood. Lastly, how can we live like overcomers? How can we live like overcomers? Again, I quote Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. John says that they overcame Him. Who is Him? <coughs> him is Satan. Him is the wicked one. Him is the Antichrist. Him is the false prophet. Him is this wicked world. And they overcame Him. How? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. There's two things. Satan will always leave us alone when we plead the blood and when we quote the Scripture. When Jesus was tempted by Satan after his baptism, what did he do? He quoted the scripture. That's why the psalmist said in Psalm 119, Thy word, thy word, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. As you start this new year, start it with some type of easy Bible reading program. Now here's my recommendation. A good Bible reading program is this. Read one psalm a day. That speaks to the heart. Read one proverb a day. That gives wisdom. And then read from the Gospels. I would start in John. I just, this, in December, I read all through the four Gospels. Just I wanted to sit and just read them. I started in Luke, went to John, read Mark, and I've just finished Matthew. Month of December. Now, I'm not asking you to do that. But it just blessed me. But read from the Gospel. Start at the Gospel of John. Acts, the Apostle. Then, then, then go back to, to, to Mark. But if you'll read one psalm, one proverb, and one chapter. Now that's not very much. But it will do that consistently. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Jesus says, get thee behind me, Satan. That's right, amen. Listen, we, can, we, we are more than conquerors. We have an amazing victory. And in 2022, let's not walk around like we're surviving. Let's walk around like we're thriving in Christ. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be bumps and heartaches and 
all these stupid things. All of us will go there. All of us. But if I'm laying in a hospital bed with a heart attack, I'm not going to say, oh me, oh my. Why me? I'm going to say, thank you, Jesus, Amen. for your well-being and your protection. And if you should want to take me on home right now, I'm ready to go because to be with the Lord is far better than here. <laughs> I'm more than a conqueror. This is the victory that will come to the world even in our faith. And let's not just be a survivor. Let's be a thriver. Let's, again, the psalmist said, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Let's, let's, let's make that our focus. And, and again, John, here in this epistle of 1 John, is saying, This is what genuine, confident Christianity is about. And we can experience, and we can have this amazing victory in 2022. Amen. To be an overcomer, you must experience the new birth. You must be born again. To be an overcomer, you must have faith and have belief in Christ as your personal Savior. To be an overcomer, you must be under the blood. God said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. We must be under the blood. We must be cleansed by the blood. We sing the great old hymn, What shall wash away my sin? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's stand together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. In the sanctuary of your presence, we know it's not by my, not by power. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord. That victory comes. Not because we struggle, but because we can have confidence in Jesus. We can have confidence in the Word of God. And we can have confidence God promised that no man shall pluck us from your hand. Lord, as we began the journey of a new beginning, help us. As the, as, as the apostle said, forgetting those things which are behind. Failures, successes, sin, victory. Forgetting those things which I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. Lord, may your spirit stir our hearts, fill our minds, and guide our feet in doing your will and in following your word. In Christ I pray in your name. Terry. Page 159, page 159, Jesus. Page 159, page 159, 159. Oh, Jesus, I come.
coming in? Okay. I know they've got some stuff left out there that have milk, organic milk. I mean, the good milk. <laughs> they've got organic milk. They've got eggs, brown eggs. Amen. Good eggs. Amen. There's bread out there like hoagie rolls and some cookies and apples and onions and I'm not sure what else, but there's still a lot of stuff out there. I hope you'll go out there and help yourself and somebody you know that needs something or you need for your family. Again, we all drink milk and we all eat eggs both of the time. And so anyway, I hope you'll do that. Again, it's so good to have the Gillettes with us. Brother Daniel, why don't you and, and Ms. Laura go back to the table so the people can bring you, meet you all back. All right. Yes. Preacher, can I just say, please continue to pray for David. Uh, we learned that uh, Janice went to get him and they're keeping him up because there's some um, extra heartbeat, so he's not going home. Oh, he's not going home. No, Thank, you not going home. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Thank you for sharing. David Whalen is, again, he's had this heart attack and he stays in, hope for the home that they're going to keep him in other days. I know she told me because of all the, his blood pressure had gone way down, uh, among other things. Yesterday he was fighting. Because they were pumping nitrate uh, in for uh, for the pain, the heart pain, and so forth. Like that. So again, a lot of things going on. Let's be dismissed in prayer for the Rick Mastic. Would you dismiss us in prayer for the Rick? Thank you, Lord, uh, for this time together. Um, in the light of the recent events, Lord, we just bring these to your attention again. We know you're in control of all things, Lord. We pray, Lord, and speak to each, of them, each one of our hearts, Lord, and just allow us to hear your still, small voice, Lord. Yeah. Allow us to know what it is that we need to be doing right now to help others inside and outside of our church, to show your love to others, Lord, and to proclaim the victory, Lord, as Pastor has talked about, to proclaim, you know, what you, how we've overcome, Lord, the world through your Son, Jesus. I just ask, Lord, that you continue to lead and guide this congregation in love and in faith and all things this week, that you would continue to, to reach out to our hearts, Lord, and just uh, mold them and shape them the way that you want us to be. I ask for these things always according to your will in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.